Scientists just discovered something that may reveal the secret structure of the universe. And they're trying to hide it from you. Not really, I just wanted to be dramatic, but it's still super cool. So to start this off, we're gonna go from the smallest thing all the way up to the biggest thing. So first, there's you, and then there's Earth, then our solar system, then the Milky Way galaxy. Which I mean, that alone contains more than 100 billion stars. And then there are some one or 200 billion galaxies on the low end of estimates. Or as high as two trillion on the high end. And that's just with the observable universe. Right? We have no idea how big the rest of it is, though it could be many times larger than what we can see. And that's without mentioning the possibility of a multiverse that contains endless versions of Spider-Man. But if we stick to just this universe and just the portion that we can observe, we find something surprising. Rather than being randomly distributed all over the place, galaxies are in fact weirdly organized. They tend to gravitate together into clusters of galaxies. And then those clusters in turn group together into super clusters, with astronomers estimating we can see about 10,000 of those in total. And then the vast majority of clusters and super clusters come together to form by far the single largest structure in the known universe, the cosmic web. And that's literally what scientists call it because it's shaped like a giant spider web. And they've actually known about this for several decades now. But as telescopes and supercomputers have become more powerful, the pictures become clearer. The galaxy is tending to clump around the nodes where different threads in the web meet. And those threads appearing to consist of long streams of gas running for tens of millions of light years between the nodes. So it's believed that this cosmic web forms the grand architecture of our universe. But there's one problem. When smart people do the math, the gravity from all the galaxies, gas, and other matter making up the web shouldn't be enough to hold everything together. So they figure that there must be something else adding that extra gravitational force but what? And that is where dark matter comes in. Now to be clear, our tiny, mushy brains still aren't quite sure what the fuck dark matter actually is. Right? It's invisible, it's intangible, we're not even 100% certain that it actually exists. But scientists infer that it does because of the effect that it appears to have on regular matter. Right? And the first guy to discover this was a Caltech astronomer by the name of Fritz Zwicky in 1933. With him sitting down at his observatory and adding up all the visible mass in one galaxy cluster. And he realized it just wasn't enough to account for the gravity needed to hold it all together. So he concluded that there must be some invisible mass creating the gravitational pull. And he named this substance dark matter. But for a very long time, no one really took him seriously, which you know is kind of understandable, right? It sounds crazy. But in the 1970s, other astronomers, namely Vera Rubin, came to the same conclusion. And they quickly started to see it everywhere. With the professor of theoretical astrophysics telling Caltech magazine, whether it is the motion of galaxies or the fact that dark matter bends light or the expansion of the universe or the growth of structures in the universe, there are many different types of measurements that have been made and every single one of them fits the same paradigm of dark matter. So it's now believed that dark matter comprises as much as 85 5% of all mass in the universe, which is absolutely mind blowing because we've never directly observed it and still have no idea what it's made of. But scientists guess that it is a missing piece in the cosmic web, keeping all those nodes and threads strung together by the force of its mysterious gravity. So that as space.com put it, the cosmic web traps galaxies like morning dew on a spider web. And the big news that this entire journey has been leading to is we now have evidence of this. Because in January, a team of researchers in South Korea published the results of a breathtaking new study with them using Hawaii's Subaru telescope to peer at what's known as the Coma Cluster. Right? And it's also known known as Abel 1656. And it's a cluster of over a thousand galaxies, some 321 million light years away from Earth, which sounds incredibly far, but also on a cosmic scale, like it's actually very close. So the proximity, as well as how huge it is, makes the Coma cluster the perfect place to hunt for dark matter. And here's how they did it. Right first, they observed the light coming not from Coma itself, but from other stars and galaxies behind the cluster. Then because gravity causes light to bend, they can see how much the light bent as it traveled through the Coma cluster, and then use that to calculate how much gravity is acting upon. And with that, since larger bodies of mass create more gravity, they could calculate how much mass must be in the cluster. And when they did this, they found that not only is the mass from its regular matter too small to account for all the gravity, but so is the mass from even the dark matter associated with its galaxies. So from this, they concluded that there must be dark matter between the galaxies too, with it located in those threads tying the whole cosmic web together. And you can see the dark matter here represented by the green clouds over the cluster and distant galaxies. So that means that if this is what we think it is, we now have the first ever indirect observation of dark matter on the cosmic web. And at this point, if you're like, okay, so what, Phil? Why should I give a shit about the cosmic structure of the universe? And to that, I would say one, find a nicer way to ask that question. Two, because it's just fucking cool. And three, because this discovery takes humanity one step closer to understanding the evolution of our universe over the past 13.8 billion light years. From the tiniest, densest dot to the unfathomably vast expanse. And if we can figure out our past, then maybe it'll help us figure out our future. Anyway, I, I apologize to anyone that was uh, too high for this segment. I'm also sorry if it gave you uh, visuals of a uh, dark matter spewing spider god. But for everyone else, uh, I, I hope you uh, enjoyed this segment. Because personally, I found it really cool. Thank you for listening.